welcome back to the Graceful Tangle YouTube channel. I'm Amy Kate, a young but passionate knitter and crocheter. You can find all of the links to the various places where you can find me on the social media in the description box below, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. I would love for you to follow me on all of those places. I have Instagram and Ravelry and so many other things. If you haven't already, I would love it if you took a moment to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can know each and every time I upload a video. So I am so excited to be back with you guys today talking about a brand new pattern, but it is not my pattern. This was designed by Rachel of Maven Crafted and it is the Iris Raglan Pullover. This is such an amazing sweater pattern. I love mine so much. It's one of my favorite sweaters that I've ever made, hands down. For sure, I can't wait to make another one. But I wanted to take a few minutes to talk all about my sweater, um, kind of a little bit about it so that you know what to expect when going into knitting this sweater. So, first things first, I want to talk a little bit about my, about my specific sweater. I made the extra small or the smallest size in the pattern. It is a, um, oh, I used the, wow, mind blank. I used Nimpix Stroll Tweed. Let me actually see what the colorway is. I have a barley header. So this is the yarn that I used. It is a fingering weight sweater. This is actually the first sweater that I've made with a true fingering weight yarn. I've made sweaters in the past, um, that required a fingering weight gauge, and I got that, um, but the yarn actually technically wasn't a fingering weight. So, anyway, this is the first order that I made with actual true fingering weight yarn, and it is so amazing. I love the fabric so much. It's so practical of Alabama, and I really like that about it. So, I'm really looking forward to making some more fingering weight sweaters in the future. And this is a top-down sweater. Um, so you start here at the neckline, do a bit of short rows for the back, which look like this. So you can see that it sits very nicely on the back of your neck without choking you in the front. It is a pretty high neck, but it's not uncomfortable. Like, it does not bother me at all. Um, it has this beautiful raglan detail, which is just so gorgeous. I love the way that it looks so much, and it's super, super simple. It is technically a cable, but you don't need a cable needle for it, which, in my opinion, is my favorite way of cables for sure. <laughs> um, and then you go down the body. There were a few options in the pattern of how you can actually finish off the body. You can go all the way down and then just do some ribbing and finish off like a normal sweater, or you can do a split hem, which is what I chose to do, and make the front a little bit shorter than the back, and then do ribbing worked flat. So that is the option that I chose, and I absolutely love it. It kind of gives you a little bit more space in the hip area, which just makes, in my opinion, for a more comfortable sweater. Um, it's not restricting in any way. The bind off is not too tight. Sometimes I have found that in sweaters that aren't um, worked with a split hem, it can be a little bit constricting and a little bit difficult to find the best bind off and the best length to make it the most comfortable. Um, that's just something that I've kind of noticed and this is the first sweater that I've really done a successful split hem um, and I really, really love it. I'm really happy that I chose that method. It's also such a great length. Um, I am wearing, obviously, pants with this um, and they are a little bit high waisted. So, like, here, my belly button is right about here. Um, I'm wearing a black tank top under this. So, you can see, you know, the tank top up here. Um, but it goes past, like, it's right at my hip. So, here's my hip. Um, it goes just past that. And then, of course, the back is just a little bit longer. So, I wouldn't wear, like, leggings with this. I would wear actual pants. Um, but I am not the least bit concerned with, like, showing anything. Just because I'm wearing a tank top and it looks great. I'm really really in love with the way that this looks she also has a couple of different length options for the sleeves you can do long sleeves um i know she has a long sleeve version i think and i feel like you i know you could alter it um i think she just has these two links in the pattern i could be mistaken about that but um regardless you can make the sleeves as long or as short as you'd like i chose to make them hit right above my elbow um, and I absolutely love the length. If I'm remembering correctly, it's actually the first sweater that I've made sleeves that are, um, just like this, like kind of a little bit slim fitting, but don't quite hit my elbow. 
and I love them. It's so comfortable. It provides just enough warmth, just enough warmth so that my hands, oh my hands, wow, so that my arms don't get cold, but um, it's also like covering enough to where I feel like it's more of a fall sweater rather than a summer sweater. Um, and yeah, I love it. She originally designed this yarn using, she did not design the yarn. Wow, guys. She originally designed the sweater using Slub Yarn, which is a yarn that I really want to try one day, um, but I have not yet. And it looks so good in Slub Yarn. Like, it looks absolutely amazing. However, myself and a lot of other testers use this standard fingering weight yarn, and it looks so good as well. It gives a completely different look, but I really, really like it. Um, I actually used this tweed yarn, which I love as well. It's kind of like the in-between um, of slub and fingering, in my opinion. You still have a little bit of texture, a little bit of, of um, like interest, but it's not as unique, per se, as a slub yarn. So I've never personally knit with a slub yarn um, a long time ago. I had like a boucle style yarn that was really old and was kind of the same texture as a slub. Um, I no longer have that yarn. I used it all up, but it was kind of similar to slub. So I kind of compare slub yarn to that. Um, and it's not, I wouldn't say that it's difficult to knit with, but it's not as easy as say a standard finger wool yarn, in my opinion. Um, again, I have never knit with it, so I can't really be the one to ask questions about that, but, um, Again, one day I really hope to have the opportunity to knit with it. So yes, I absolutely love this sweater. I could not recommend the pattern more. I will link to it in the description box below so that you can check it out for yourself. Um, and yeah, it's such a great pattern. It shares so many sizes, so many different variations. I love patterns that include instructions and ways to modify a sweater or the garment or, you know, the accessory, whatever you're making. Um... I love it when they provide instructions and methods to change it up in a way that fits you better or flatters you more or suits your fancy, you know, and I, I love that so much. Um, another last thing that I love about this pattern is the amount of ease. It is so comfortable because it has all of this ease, but it's not too overwhelming in the ease department as well. Like it's not, it's not swallowing me whole, but it's a cute, um, a cute fully shirt and I really really enjoy it so I hope that you have enjoyed this video and kind of enjoyed um hearing about my sweater and about this pattern I highly encourage you to check it out again I will include the links below to where you can find it so be sure to go check it out and give it a little bit of love even if you don't plan on knitting it a similar heart helps the designer so much so thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will chat with you all next time bye